good morning to every one of you. Indeed, it's good that I can uh, be able to share with you another lesson uh, this morning for the for this month. I'm the first speaker for this month because uh, Brother Victor Chan is very busy in during the first month. I mean, the first week, the first two weeks of the month. So I have uh, changed the thing. So we we want to, as you see in this. Uh, 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 I mean, I want to welcome all of you here this morning, especially our visitor, I think that your name, hey. uh, hey. uh, Miss Grace, uh, and uh, Alex, and the, the mother, yes. Uh, we welcome all of you here, and we're very glad that you can come and join us this morning. Uh, this morning, I'd like to share with you, uh, this one is not my original lesson, but this is the lesson taken from our uh, Brother Copeland, you may have heard of Brother Copeland, and then I, I, I see that this lesson is very uh, suitable. So, I mean, something that strikes me, so I use this lesson. I hope that this lesson also can uh, be able to have some striking effect on you. Okay, uh, it may be very uh, simple, but I think it's uh, very profound in its uh, finding of what. Uh, truth is all about. So the lesson I have uh, this morning is called the Gospel of Christ and the problem of sin. See, how does uh, this uh, relationship, the Gospel, how does the Gospel uh, addresses the problem of sin? Or what is the problem of sin? And what is the, when there's a problem, we need to what is the next thing we need to do is to solve this problem. What is the answer to this problem of sin? The solution. Uh, this morning, this is how the gospel is the solution. How does it work? How am I going to know? This is what the gospel is telling you about. There's one book in the market, it says, uh, whatever happened to sin. See, the thing is that this is question of S-I-N. Sin. What is sin? A lot of people have taken the word very lightly, both by the world and even by the church. Exactly what is sin? What is sin? S-I-N is a very small word. Sin. It is a very powerful uh, tool of the devil. See, this is where there is a difference between what and what. What is sin? Okay, let's look at the sin definition in the Bible. I would like you to turn with me to 1 John chapter 3. In the book of 1 John, it tells us of the definition of sin. And it says in verse 4, Everyone who practices sin also practices lawlessness. Everyone who practices sin also practices lawlessness. And what is sin? Sin is lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. That's the definition of sin. Lawless, what is lawless? Is a dictionary defined people or actions without respect for the law. See, that's lawless. Who always transgress the law. They, they are lawbreakers. See? So, but this is not talking about the law of the land. Talking about the law of God. The law of God. That is lawlessness. That is sin. Sin is lawlessness. Lawlessness. Huh? So an uh, example of this lawlessness is what? That who has transgressed the law of God? In the beginning, when there was in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, Eve took of the 
forbidden fruit. The fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. It's not apple. A lot of people say apple. Right? The fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. See, there's uh, one uh, joke. People say, oh, this is the, the, the man has a deer, a throat here, and you can see an apple. It's called Adam's apple. So, you know what? What happens? It's because suddenly God called and said, oh, let's start here. <laughs> So the apple was stuck here, so the apple is remaining as you today. No, it's the it's the it's the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. So this is the, the thing that happened that because of the sin of Eve, Adam was also taken in. And then they were both chased out of the Garden of Eden. See? Because of sin. So sin actually prevents one from God, separates one from God. Remember in Isaiah, what did Isaiah say? The prophet Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah says, let's turn to Isaiah. Isaiah says, it is something that separates you and your God. See, it is not that God's here is never too short. A lot of people say, oh, maybe God's here is too short. Or God's hand is too short. Okay, let's turn to Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1. He said, Behold, the Lord's hand is not so short that it cannot save. Oh, it cannot save. Neither is ear so dull that it cannot hear. But your iniquities, your sins, have made a separation between you and your God. It is a sin that separates the sinner from the Savior, from God. The man today, you, me, from God. This is the sin that separates us. See, the sin. So, do you think that the sin is very destructive? It's very destructive. So, it is, we need to beware of sin. We need to beware of sin. So this is one of the definitions that we need to make right with God. How do we make right with God? Another definition I would like to point out is James also defined sin as what? Let's turn to James. James says failure to do good is sin. How does uh, what is it all about? James chapter 4 verse 17. Okay. You will see properly he says, Therefore, to one who knows the right thing to do, me, if I know I need to do this, it is right, and does not do it to me, to him it is sin. So we fall into the category. Do we fall into the category? We are not the person that people say, oh, I'm, I don't steal, I don't cheat. Huh? I am not a bad evil person where the police will come and arrest me for evil doing. So, we are not a sinner in, in the law. Okay? But here, James says, but we sin because we do, we do not do what is right. The sin of omission. See, most people have the sin of commission. They commit this sin. Huh? But now there is a sin of omission. So we fall in the category, many of us, fall in the category of sin of omission. We don't help those who are in need. We just uh, lend a deaf ear. See, so it's very sad that we, so in the conclusion, is you and I, we all have sinned. That's why the Bible says what? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We are short of God's glory. We cannot enter heaven with our sins. So what to do today? Okay, doing that which violates your conscience, even if the act is right within itself. What it's talking about is 